Hello, my name is Kay Byfield, and this is Art Speak Studio in Dallas, Texas. And this is your Art Speak Studio moment. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of value in painting. Artists use the term value to describe the range from light to dark in any hue or color on the color wheel. And value is a very critical element for painters. The reason value is so important is because without light and dark, we can't see. And so on a two dimensional surface, the lights and darks of the painting tell us where the light source is and what we are trying to simulate is happening in the painting. We cannot see shapes without values. Value is more important than color because color receptors are different among all the people, but almost everybody who has vision will agree on when something is lighter or darker. There are infinite number of values between the lightest version of a color and the darkest, but most value scales break it down to 10 values. This is because we know everybody can see a distinct difference in each of those value steps. And that makes it easy to talk about value. In each of these value steps, it is 10 degree, 10 percent. In each of these value steps, it is 10 percent lighter or darker than the step that is before it and after it. Color is important too, but we use color to give us information about something. For instance, a yellow banana is ripe and a green banana in most cases isn't. Or if somebody's skin tone is looking kind of greenish, you ask them if they might be ill. We also find color to be very attractive. It draws our attention and it, it increases our interest and our enjoyment sometimes. Color can also be used to establish mood when we're doing a painting. So color is important, but color is a less reliable source of making the painting work than value is. Value comes in two kinds. We have native values and we have illumination values. The native values are the values that are intrinsic to an object, and the illumination values are the values that are created when light strikes the object. Native value, as I said, is the value that is inherent in an object. In the black and white shoe, the inherent values are black, white, and a mid-tone on the sole. In the lady's shoe, there are two tones, a green and a, pur and a dulled purple, but both are mid values. Both the green and the violet are dulled colors, but they are also not light or dark. Illumination value is the values that we see when something is under the lights, like in this apple. And with illumination values, we can see the form of the object because where the light strikes the surface, it is much lighter and where the object turns away from the surface, it gets darker. So this gives us a sense of how the form goes. The apple here is um, a dark mid-tone, but where the light strikes the surface, it is white. And as it turns away, it gets much darker. And we can see this very well when we do a grayscale photograph of that same apple it shows us where the light hits the surface and where it turns. And I want you to notice that even though that's grayscale and there is no color information, we still know it's an apple. Every color comes in a full range from the lightest version of it to the darkest version. But that range is lengthened or shortened depending upon what the color is. And we can make something read, we can understand it as we do in this photograph of the berries, even though we don't use any other color except one. It becomes a monochrome. The challenge is that every color has a different value range. 
So some colors have an extended value range where they go from very light to very dark as the blue, the purple, and the blue-violet do in the color wheel. And some colors like the yellow and that light bluish color and the, even the greens have a much shorter value range. And the challenge comes when we try to make darks using those hues. Here we have two brightly colored parrots in front of some trees, some foliage. And this composition could be very challenging if you focus on the color and the, the bright different hues of colors and the changes in those values because of the illumination. So the first thing that an artist would do is break this down into a value study. And we can see the possibilities of this, again, by looking at a black and white version of the photo. We can tell, even without the color, that these are parrots. And if you put a value scale next to it, you can see that all the values are represented. The trick would be to design them into a coherent composition. I am not recommending that you take a reference photo, put it into grayscale, and use that without doing any editing or changing. But I want you to recognize that value is a critical aspect of color because it tells us where one shape ends and another begins. And it tells us where the light is coming from and how the form changes. So looking at the photograph of the sunflower here, when I went to do a value study, I had to decide which is lighter and which is darker, even though the value in the photo in many cases was the same. So do I make the petals of the flower darker than the sky or do I make the sky darker than the, than the petals? I could rely on color, paint the petals yellow, paint the sky blue, but I get much more drama and effect from the painting if I make a value choice between the two. Establishing values that help the subject read and help to move the eyes around the composition is one of the strongest ways to create a good painting. Going back to our red apple, if I render that apple as a value study with hard edges, and I know that these, um, these changes in value would be in most cases soft edges because this is a rounded form, Using numbers one through six, you can see how I laid these values out in the apple. There's another important point about value. Value is relative. There is no such thing as a dark without a lighter version of the color near it. And there is no such thing as a light without a darker version. And to show you how this works, here's a value scale where that center strip is a mid-tone and the 10 step value scale. And you notice that where that center strip is next to the lighter values, it looks dark. But where it is next to the darker values, it looks light, even though the value all the way across is the same. Artists need to design their artworks with value in mind and the value specifically designed in order to strategically carry what they're trying to say. These two reference photos are very different in terms of color, but the process of designing compositions using them would be the same. The artist would design a value study first, deciding where the lights and darks are and balancing them around the composition. And then when they did the painting in color, they would have that as the backbone of information for their subsequent painting, which would make it much more likely that the painting will actually be successful. Thank you for joining us today in this Art Speak Studio moment. I hope you learned a little bit about value and that you'll join us again either here for another Art Speak Studio moment or in the studio or online for an Art Speak Studio class. We look forward to seeing you again and in the meantime, happy painting.